Welcome to Tech Notice. In this video, you will find out what is the best camera to get within the budget of $500 to $1,000. Okay, I made a video before and um, if you haven't seen that one, check up there. It's about the best cameras of 2019 and 18. Like what are the best cameras that have been released or best cameras to look out for in this season. But someone commented, Maui Musashi commented and said that, what about a more budget range? So here is this video, so let's jump straight into it. So because the prices vary all the time, I've left the links in the description so you can check them out and find out what's the latest price and also find some helpful information there. And hopefully if you wanna get the camera, you're gonna use one of these links because these are affiliate links, which means you're gonna help me make these videos. Thank you very much if you do that. I'm gonna take the best cameras of each brand. We're gonna run through different brands and then we're gonna take out the best camera that I think you should get for video making between the budget of 500 to 1,000 pounds. Okay, the first one that we're gonna look at is the Sony brand. Now, I have three cameras for you to choose from in that Sony brand section. First one is the camera that's been released most recently and if you wanna find out my opinion and video about it, you can click up there. But this is the Sony a6400. Now I think it packs a lot of cool new features and uses some of the old hardware as best as it can. It's had a massive software upgrade. It's got insane auto focusing system upgrade. So this is a very awesome camera. But let's take a look a little bit deeper on some of the good sides and some of the bad sides. So you just can decide for yourself if this is the camera for you. So the Sony a6400 comes with uh, $900 and with a kit lens, you can get it for a thousand pounds. So it depends if you wanna pick up a lens as well with it. So it does 4K, it's got a selfie screen that pops out like that. It's got insanely fast auto focusing system. It's got the good E-mount, which means that some of your full frame lenses, if you purchase full frame lenses straight away, you can later use them for your full frame camera if you upgrade the body. Absolutely amazing. Can do slow-mo up to 120 frames per second. It's got log profiles, which means, you know, for color grading and hybrid log gamma profiles, it's just packs insane amount of features. The only bad side that it has is that it doesn't have in-body stabilization. So if you want to do a lot of handheld shots, you might want to pick up a lens that has a built-in optical stabilization. Now the second camera that I can recommend from Sony is the Sony a6500, which I am shooting through at the moment over there, which is an absolute beast of a camera. Uh, it's got pretty much all the same features, but not as good autofocusing system, and it has a recording limit, whereas the a6400, it doesn't have that. It does have in-body stabilization. So if that in-body in stabilization is really important to you, you can pick up the body of a6500 for $1,048, which is just a little bit more than the 1,000 budget, but you can get always deals and probably now after the 6400 was released, it might come down a little bit. Bad side of the A6500 is that it can overheat at times and it doesn't have a flip out screen, so it's much harder to know what you're shooting with. Now the next and the last camera from Sony is the most budget one and it's the Sony a5100. Just looking on Amazon here, you can pick that up for $548 with a kit lens and there are some bundles as well. So if you wanna pick up some other lenses or some other accessories with it, you can get pretty much awesome stuff with it. So make sure you check out the link in the description. But that camera has also a flip out screen, but it doesn't have 4K, it has slow motion, and it's got very basic features that not as many features in, but if you wanna start get started with Sony, with the E-mount system, it's a perfect camera to start with. And to see yourself, it's very important. I think one of the main bad sides of the A60, A50, 100 sorry is that it doesn't have a hot shoe mount which means mounting a microphone can be a little bit tricky so you have to get extra accessories and blah 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 but enough of sony let's move to the next one let's move to canon maybe you want a canon camera and so what is the best camera that you should get for that amount of money i think i've got just the perfect camera for you and that camera is called the canon m50 now the body on its own you can get for $566 or 
you can get it for $649 with the kit lens. Some of the awesome features that you get with that camera is that it is an APS-C size sensor. It's not small, you know, it's stepped down from the full frame, but it's still quite a big sensor to have inside a little vlogging camera, which is awesome. You get a very good autofocusing system. It's the Canon's dual pixel face detection autofocusing system, which is almost flawless. So it's this is a very good thing to have when filming yourself and wanting it to focus really good for yourself. It's very simple to use. You get full HD at 60 frames per second. You have in-body stabilization. You have 4K and you have a flip out screen that flips out to the side. Now this is just amazing, okay? But there are some bad sides and the bad side is that when you are in 4K, there is an insane crop on the sensor. On 4K and you have a 10 millimeter lens on, then the actual focal length that you're gonna get is 25.6 millimeters, which means that it's got a crop factor of 2.56 times, which is a lot. And it's not an EF mount, it's an EFM mount, which means that you can't mount the full frame camera lenses of Canon lenses to that camera, which means you have to get an adapter and things like that. So it's a little bit of a different system, but you get a lot of things for your money. So if you want to get that, the link is in the description. Now, the next one is Panasonic and probably the Panasonic is, I would say the best bang for your buck if you're looking for a lot of features and want to pay very little. This camera is called the G85. Now it looks a lot like the GH5, but it isn't. It's got a flip out screen and all that sort of stuff. But the best thing is that it comes with $797 with the 12 to 60 millimeter kit lens. That is pretty amazing. Now that camera has 4K, it's completely weatherproof. It's got insane in-body image stabilization. It's got a flip out screen and it's got micro four thirds mount, which means you can get any of the old lenses from the eBay or internet, find any lens and stick it on there and you're gonna get some really cool creative stuff you can shoot with. Very cheap lenses available, but the bad side is that it's not so great on low light because of the small sensor and it doesn't have a good autofocusing system. So if you're looking for a good autofocusing system, then that camera is probably not the best one for you. But if you want a lot of packed in features, that's the one to get. Now the last option is a Fuji. Yeah, surprisingly, it's not the new X-T3 because it's more expensive, but it's, it's the previous version, which is the X-T2. And you can get the body for $1,099, which is just above the budget. I just thought we can still include that in the video, but you get a 4K, you get Fuji color, you get film simulation. It also has a dual SD card slot. It's not mainly made for video. And if you're doing a lot of video, then maybe it's not perfect for you. But if your YouTube channel is also a lot about photography, then this is probably the best photography camera and video camera out of these options because it packs a lot of good features uh, in there with how Fuji uses their sensor and the autofocusing system and everything. You just get a lot. Plus you get two dual SD card slots, which means you can get backups. It's proper professional. But the bad sides are that um, there is a lot of limits on recording video. So you can record mini video in 4K only up to 10 minutes and 15 minutes on full HD and 30 minutes on 720p. So there's not a lot of recording time on when you're shooting video. Okay, so these were the cameras that I think you should be getting if you're looking into starting a YouTube channel or starting a video vlog, things like that. Remember, I've linked all the, the cameras in the description. Hopefully this research helped you out and you don't have to look around anymore, which is the best camera. If you like this video, leave it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll meet you in the comment section below. You wanna meet me there? Okay, see you there. And in the next video. Okay, thanks for watching, bye-bye.